Hi everyone, bear with me one second. I'm going to start getting the room set up here for the presentation and we'll start around seven o'clock or maybe a minute or two afterwards. Got it. So bear with me one second. Hello, Christine. Here, I'm going to make you a co-host. Okay, we have about two minutes and we'll start. Um, I am recording this session, so it will be put up, posted up on YouTube hopefully tomorrow. Um, worst case, Tuesday. Um, so bear with me one second. Let me just yell at my children to be quiet real quick. Bear with me. And just checking, everyone can hear me okay. Um, also, can you see my screen? It should be Middlesex screen. Yep, I do see it. All right, great. So what I'm going to do just um, uh, for this, I'm, I am going to mute everyone. By default, everyone should be coming into the chat room muted um, just because it kind of gets a little bit crazy here. Um, you know, there have been instances where, um, you know, someone's phones are ringing or, you know, someone doesn't realize uh, they'll put me on hold and there's hold music going on, um, different things like that. So it's usually better off just to kind of I'll put everyone on mute. And if you notice a new little chat window there, if you have any questions or anything, I have Christine Blanos here. She is my assistant director uh, of e-learning. She is very awesome. And um, any questions that you may have while I'm going through all this, type them in the chat window and she will um, be as awesome as she always is. And she um, provides great feedback and good answers. Hello, everyone. Hello. So I was telling Christine tonight, like, the, you know, we've had orientations kind of all week. The first night, like Tuesday, we had orientations for faculty. And then last night, we, we stayed late for our adjuncts. And then last night, we had an online orientation for our faculty on how to use Canvas. So now we're doing um, the orientation for you guys. And it's funny because I use um, these orientations as a lot of examples providing to the faculty um, on using Canvas and kind of providing scenarios and um, answering questions. So hopefully you'll get a lot out of this. Um, we'll do our best to kind of answer any questions that you have. Um, if there are any issues about logging in and stuff like that, that primarily goes to IT. Um, before I kind of get into this, I know that there was an issue kind of where um, dash, the dashboard screen was flashy, flashing, flashy. Um, basically, uh, the main root of the issue is um, most people using Internet Explorer or um, um, Safari. So with Canvas, you know, when we start and everything, Canvas, we request, Canvas is supported basically, um, we support Chrome and we support Firefox. So if there's any kind of other um, browser that you're using, I know there's like Opera, there's some other ones out there, um, suggest Chrome and we suggest Firefox. I know in a couple of months, Internet Explorer will be, or Microsoft's coming out with a new browser, which Canvas will be supporting um, and it'll be run off of um, Chrome, ChromeKit. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. 
right? And there are people popping up. I have to change my settings here to let people in. Usually it's kind of defaulting to a waiting room, which is kind of weird. Zoom, there's so much stuff in Zoom, drives me crazy. So time on the clock here says 7.02. Um, my name is Michael Sullivan. I am director of e-learning here at Middlesex. I have Christine Blanos on the line here and she is our assistant director. Christine is awesome and she will be moderating the chat portion um, of this webinar. So my goal in this whole session is to make sure, is to kind of answer any questions that you may have, kind of show you the day in the life of a student um, using Canvas at Middlesex, whether it be, I'm a mosquito flying here, if, whether it be online or um, fully online or just using Canvas for a face-to-face -face class where, you know, we're kind of trying to keep it open. Um, normally there is a PowerPoint that I would show with this, but we're revamping it and we've been so busy, so I'm not going to show you death by PowerPoint tonight. So we're just going to kind of jump into the canvas, the canvas portion of um, the presentation. Um, so sparing you probably about a good 20 minutes here. <laughs> so um, that being said, um, as I said before, when you're using any kind of browsers to access canvas, you want to make sure you're using either Chrome or Firefox. Um, for this example here, I am actually, I'm using Chrome here. I am at Middlesex's main page here. Um, if you want the easiest way to access Canvas, usually is if you go into my MCC right here. And then you have uh, Canvas right here. You would click on that. You have access to Web Advisor, all the different kind of tools here. Um, I will say that uh, Office 365 has come a long way. I know a lot of people are used to kind of uh, Google. Um, but Office 365 is pretty righteous and um, definitely take advantage of it. I know the college, um, it, it's for the college. And I know, I think the college actually allows you like one download. I don't quote me on it, but they allow you like a download of the Office 365 suite on your computer. So definitely take advantage of it. It's very cool. And the sharing uh, capabilities are awesome. Um, so anyway, I am here in my MCC. My MCC is kind of like this main kind of portal here where you can kind of access all the different apps at Middlesex. If you notice in here, you have your announcements area here. If there's anything kind of going on, this is a great place to kind of find out from here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to click on Canvas right here. And of course it, it logs me in, which I didn't want it to. Um, so, <laughs> So basically when you do come into to log into Canvas, um, if you notice the screen is the same per, um, you know, your Microsoft Outlook, any kind of Office 365 or um, I'm trying to think what else, uh, LibGuides, um, whatever other else we do offer, you kind of come to the same login screen. So it's kind of like a single sign on. Um, one username and password will kind of open up many things for you at Middlesex. Um, so don't be deterred. If you see this screen, it's not like you're at, you're accessing your email or whatever. It, it's, it's taking to where you need to be, but it's just kind of one generic screen uh, fits all. So after you log into your screen here, um, I'm actually going to jump into Firefox because it works. it's been working better for me here today. So once you do log in, you are actually taken to um, kind of what's a dashboard screen here in Canvas. Um, if you notice in here, we have kind of announcements in here that are going on. These are global announcements. These aren't pushed out by your instructors. These are pushed out by e-learning or IT. Um, we try not to kind of, we don't try not to post too much out there because I know um, all of you are bombarded by tons and tons of information from the college. So we just, we try to put out anything kind of that's really important um, that would benefit you. We don't want to kind of oversaturate. I know you want to come into Canvas and you just want to do your classwork. You don't want to have to read through tons and tons of stuff. We get that. And trust me, I, I'm, I'm totally uh, with you guys on that. I know you guys get a lot of stuff thrown your way. So um, basically, we have an announcement here. Anything in red is kind of really, really important, which was like the issue that we were dealing with today with the flashing dashboard. Um, so we put it in right here to let you know that, yeah, you need to use Chrome or Firefox. If you're using Internet Explorer, you are going to run into a lot of issues. If you ever want to close out of it, you can just kind of X out of here and it goes away. And then, you know, here's our information regarding the orientations as well. And then there was an issue with Canvas message forwarding. Um, so Canvas is really cool for the fact that it, it, you can actually, any messages you receive in Canvas will forward out into your Microsoft Outlook uh, account. Um, we were running into some issues because um, this past summer, uh, we were getting spammed pr pretty heavily uh, at the college. They really kind of tightened up their, um, I guess, the white list as far as what could come in and what doesn't. Um, so what happened was um, some 
some ma mail from Canvas was actually being bounced back. So if you are kind of receiving any issues, if you're not getting any emails forwarded to you from Canvas, uh, I strongly suggest reaching out to IT. And um, you know, if, if you can provide like a time um, when you did receive your message from Canvas, um, they'll usually ask you that in your name and everything like that and just kind of let them know um, that you are not receiving any forwarded mail from Canvas. So those, that's kind of the two important things we were letting you know, actually three, and along with the orientations for tonight. So that's a global announcement here within Canvas. Um, next, let me just see if I can make this bigger because I know last night there were some issues. Christine, is that better? Much better. Ah, yay. Okay. So I just in here, to add, Mike, about the, um, the Canvas messaging forwarding, mm -hmm. just to remind them to um, check both Canvas and Outlook so that you don't miss anything. Yes, and there is actually another good point too. There are apps, uh, if you have an Android or an iPhone, um, basically there are apps available for Canvas um, in the App Store, the Google Play Store. You can download them, and the cool thing is if your mail isn't getting forwarded, um, you, know, you still wanna log in and check uh, via your computer, but the cool thing is um, you get badge notifications if there's anything, you know, any messages that come in through Canvas um, to your iPhone or your Android device. Um, the app is pretty righteous. We're not asking you to type your full paper on it, but it's great if you need to read any information or maybe if you need to see any announcements or, you know, say if you're on the train or whatever, you can kind of read through some of your course materials. But don't type your paper up in there, you know, because it gets kind of crazy if you're just using your thumbs. Um, so please, um, you know, any ty type of paperwork, do it in um, your computer. But if you're reading anything, yeah, absolutely take advantage of the app. So anyway, I am back in here. If you notice here, again, we have the global announcement. On your right is the to-do area here. If you have any kind of assignments that are upcoming, basically it will come up here and it'll let you know, hey, um, you have to do this discussion forum post by tomorrow night at 7 p.m. or say there's you know, uh, a quiz that you have to take or even if something's been graded. So if you notice recent feedback, uh, you'll get a grade right there. So it's kind of nice, it's kind of a heads up display as far as everything that's going on in Canvas for you. On the left-hand side, what we have is called the uh, global navigation. So it doesn't matter any course that you're in. Um, you can kind of think of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Um, there's no place like home. This will always be here. This is not going anywhere. So you could be in your computer science course and say, hey, maybe you want to jump out and just check out something. Um, or you're not quite sure as to where you are and you can just click back out to the dashboard field and you will get back to kind of um, where you start when you log into Canvas. Uh, above that is kind of your account uh, screen here. You, I mean, you can kind of customize it. Um, if you were to go into settings here, you can kind of uh, link your uh, Google Drive and other things as well in here. As well, if, if you have any other mail forwarding, you can kind of put a different email address in here as well. Um, I'm trying to see what else here. And then also, you know, if you want to change your avatar, you can. If you want to put a picture of a cat, you can put a picture of a cat up there. It's up to you. Uh, I do need to change this picture. I don't know what's kind of going on here. But anyway, um, so your account info here, you can, you know, change your picture. You have your profile info here. Maybe you want to add a little bit bio if you want to, you can. Uh, it's up to you. And then, um, so that's pretty much your account stuff. Uh, if you want, you can go into your dashboard again. Again, your dashboards, every course that you're signed up that you're taking at Middlesex, doesn't matter if it's fully online or if it's a face-to-face, -face, we have what's called LMS for all, learning management system for all, um, where it doesn't matter if you're online course or your face-to-face -face course, everything is listed in here um, that you can kind of access either grades or supplemental materials for your courses. Next here, we have courses. Again, this will give you a full listing of all the courses you're signed up for. So maybe you're not seeing a course you've signed up for for the fall. You can click on courses here and you can see all courses and you can kind of see everything. And, and the nice thing is, let me scroll, I have a lot here and I apologize. You can kind of see your past enrollments. You can see your future enrollments as well. So maybe, you know, your course isn't in your dashboard. You can kind of see right away what's going on here. Oh, it's not published. That's why. So, um, you know, if you're not seeing a course in there, if you go into the courses area here, uh, click on all courses, you can kind of see everything that you've either been signed up for, that you're, you know, if you're in a group, club or whatever, or any um, classes you've taken in the past or any upcoming courses. Um, if you want it to show up in your dashboard, you can kind of think of, you know, I'm a big Dr. Seuss 
guy, you know, the star belly sneeches, you know, stars upon ours, you can star something that you want to see or unstar something that you don't want to see. And then from there, once you star it or unstar it, so maybe I don't want to see um, my OER workspace here, I uns unstar it and I go back to my dashboard and it's gone. All right. And the cool thing too, you know, maybe you want to kind of rearrange some things, maybe um, say like on your, if you have the mobile app or whatever, and you're getting tired of seeing, you know, this class all the way here on the bottom, you know, maybe you want to move it around, you can actually click and drag the course wherever you want to go in your dashboard here. Um, but I'm going to move back my course here. Next thing we have here is groups. Um, if you're signed up for any groups, if you're a part of any groups, um, uh, you can click on groups and you'll see kind of a listing in there. Um, they'll look like Canvas courses actually, but uh, they're groups. Also, you have your calendar in here. The calendar is really cool if, you know, it kind of keeps track of all the courses that you're taking and it, you can kind of see any kind of due dates that are going on here. And I don't know why it's not coming up here. Um, so, you know, it can associate with all the courses you have. There are different colors here, which is pretty cool. And if you have any due dates or anything coming up, you can kind of see on the calendar here. So here on the 30th, I have a module one weekly, weekly reaction paper that is due. So, um, you know, definitely you can take a look at it. It will sync to your iCal or your Google Calendar um, if you want. So that way you can kind of, it pulls up on your phone. So, you know, you can get the info right here in your calendar feed. Next is your inbox. So your inbox is kind of like, um, I don't know, if you are familiar with Facebook Messenger, um, it's kind of stripped down, right? I mean, minus, I guess, Jeff adding GIF files and emoticons and stuff like that. Your inbox kind of is just straight up messaging from Canvas um, where you can just send a quick text message, uh, or not text message, but a quick message to your instructor if you want. Maybe you're going to be sick for class, you're not going to be there. Um, you can create a quick message and send a message to your instructor. Um, and what you can do is you can click on this little pencil here where it says compose new message. You can pick whatever course um, that you might be that you want to send the message to. Um, if your course is not published, you will not be able to send a message to um, within that course until it is published. Um, in this case here, I am just selecting online orientation for fall. And two, I know Michael Sullivan is my instructor, so I can select him and subject. Uh, I won't. Uh, or I can say subject would be like class today. And then you can say maybe I won't make it to class. Uh, XO, XO, Mike, I don't know. So in there, um, basically you can type a little quick message. You, you know, you don't have to type a novel in here or anything like that, just a quick message. Um, and also you can attach kind of things here. Maybe if you have a doctor's note or whatever, you can attach it there. Do not submit your papers this way. Um, there is a different place in Canvas where you can kind of submit any kind of work or papers. Um, so, you know, don't attach your paper here. Um, you can actually, if you wanted to, you can record a message here for your professor if you wanted to, an audio or a video comment, it's up to you. But, you know, it's just real simple and you can click on send and the message is away and there it goes. So, um, you know, with Canvas messaging, basically, um, I kind of tell students this. So if you are, Canvas is great for messaging. So when you send, when you're in Canvas, when you want to use the inbox, think of Canvas as course, Canvas course, you want to message your instructor, Canvas course, right? If you want to use Outlook, you want to use Outlook for kind of outside of your course. So say maybe you need to send a message to the dean, maybe to financial aid, maybe to the registrar. So think of Outlook as outside. So it's not pertaining with your course or coursework. Think of Canvas course messaging, your inbox right here. So I guess that's the best way I can kind of equate it all. So um, that's basically um, the inbox in a nutshell. If you want to see um, your inbox, you can click on the drop arrow. Maybe if there's an issue with your course, you can actually go to, you know, sent. You can go to archive, uh, different things like that. You can uh, access it as well. Um, that way, if there is an issue with your course, maybe you can go to your sent folder and um, pull up any information. Um, it, everything's right in here for you to see. Um, Christine, am I missing anything with the inbox? No, nope, I think you got it. Cool. All right. And uh, we're still going with global navigation. If you notice here, we have the help button. So in the help button here, we have a couple different things here. One is you can ask your instructor a question. Basically, it sends a message via the inbox uh, to your instructor. 
two, um, which is brand new, and Christine actually created this. It's the eLearning Resource Center for Students. Um, in here, basically, you can kind of, um, if you have any questions regarding Canvas, you can click into here. Oh, I, I do not have access to see it yet. Um, I think we haven't uh, rolled it out. No worries. But in here, it'll have guides as far as how you can submit a paper, how you can, um, you know, any kind of questions you might have about Canvas, how it works, maybe how to post to a discussion forum. It's all in here within that um, resource center right here. Um, next, if you see any kind of announcements from the global announcements area that was on the dashboard and maybe you X out of it by accident, you can click here and it'll kind of pull up a record as far as everything that we've sent uh, in the past. So that way it's not gone forever. You can click on it and you can access it right here. Next, uh, what else do we have here? Again, we have Canvas student guides as well. Um, and then if there are any problems, if, if there's a problem, say if Canvas isn't working right, so say like the example today, where the screen was flashy for the dashboard, you can report a problem here. So you can send a subject that here, you know, um, I'm just gonna send this because this gets sent to the IT help desk. Uh, uh, And then you can put a little description, maybe like, um, uh, I don't know, you say a dashboard is flashy. <laughs> Best way to put it, I guess. And how is this affecting you? Um, one is, you know, it's maybe if you can't access your course, of course it's an extreme, uh, it, you can't get things done until you hear back from you. Extreme criti critical emergency, really, it's, it's it, if you're not seeing, like if you have to submit a paper and it's say it's midnight and you're not seeing the assignment area, that's not an extreme critical emergency. It has to be if something's broken, something's not working correctly. Um, it has to be a kind of a big deal because this actually gets forwarded out to Canvas support. So, um, and this kind of higher up than uh, Middlesex IT. So if it is a, an emergency or anything like that, make sure it is a real emergency. Um, so. Just bear that in mind here. Usually I need some help, but it's not urgent. It's usually the best bet. So I'm not going to submit the ticket just because, um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't want to send it to IT. So also here you have library. Um, if you need to access anything from the library, you can kind of click right here. It takes you to the library page. And then you have my MCC right here as well. This cool little button that we have going on here is um, read speaker. So it's kind of cool where it will actually read kind of anything that's on the screen for you. Um, and it'll actually, there's a translator in there as well where it should read it um, within your um, language. So if you speak Spanish, it'll read it in Spanish um, or translate in Spanish. So definitely take a look at it. It's really cool. Um, you know, here are the different um, uh, translations or the different um, how it reads kind of the information to you uh, right here. So take a look at it. Um, it's free for you guys. Um, and it, you know, maybe if you don't wanna sit there and intently read something on the screen, you can kind of go to a page that you like or a page for your course, hit read speaker and it will read it for you. So uh, very cool tool, um, take, the, take advantage of it. So now, uh, yes, go ahead. Before you move on, could you try the um, Student Support Center again? Resource yes. Center? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to the resource center and let's get away. Let's get rid of this thing here down here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the resource center is right here. If I click on it, hmm. I might just need to log out. It could be because I'm, I'm in as a needle look -see, So. Yeah, but I have it public. So, okay. Uh, I'll look at that tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. So when it, you guys do see it, it is very visual and you'll like it a lot. I promise. So now I'm going back to the dashboard area here now. So I'm kind of doing the day in the life of a student uh, at Middlesex. This mosquito is driving me crazy. It keeps flying here. I'm gonna <laughs> put my hand through my monitor in a second. So anyway, um, I am in my dashboard. I am signed up for the online orientation fall of 2019. Uh, hey, cool, it's Star Wars. For those of you who don't know, I'm a big Star Wars geek. Um, so I'm gonna click on here. And so let's think of this as maybe either maybe a face-to-face -face course that I have or, you know, even an online course here. Um, you know, basically here's kind of the course welcome screen here, which could, you know, tell you all the information that's going on with your course before you start. Um, welcome to Star Wars 101, introduction to Star Wars, yada, yada, yada. And then down here, here's a textbook that you can purchase. Uh, I know a lot of your instructors are putting that information there. And then also your syllabus here that you can click on that you can access, you can download it. 
No longer can you say, hey, the dog ate my syllabus. I didn't know it was due this week. It's always going to be here. It's not going anywhere. So, um, you know, syllabus is right here. Um, and it will be, you know, for different courses, it, different courses do kind of um, look different in some regard. But, you know, in most cases, you can see your syllabus one way or the other, either on your home screen, on the left here uh, in syllabus, but different places. Also here we have any kind of announcements that your instructor might have put up here. So a good e example, say for a face-to-face -face course for an announcement is maybe um, we're getting, you know, we're coming into the fall season with winter as well. Um, maybe course your class might be canceled for inclement weather. Maybe a snowstorm or whatever is going on here, or maybe your instructor isn't feeling well. They'll put a notice in here for announcement uh, to let you know that maybe the course is canceled, or maybe say there's a, um, a quiz coming up that they want you to do, you know, to study for, or maybe uh, change an assignment. But um, it's right here in the announcements area here, um, which you can see on your home screen. And uh, definitely, you know, keep an eye out for if there is any kind of announcement. Canvas is kind of cool for the fact that where you are notified kind of of three things by default um, that come from Canvas. One, if anything is graded um, by your instructor, you'll receive a notification via email, or you know, if you have the app, you'll get a, a pop up on your app. Uh, if you have an announcement in your course, that's number two. And then if your instructor or anyone sends you a message, that's three. So you'll get, those are kind of the three notifications that you'll receive from Canvas um, if anything's going on. So again, you know, right here on the left here, this is kind of your course menu. So I was at home before. And when I clicked into the announcement here, it jumped over to the announcements area here. And then next is modules. Modules is kind of like the, the meat and potatoes, the lettuce and tofu, the heart and soul of um, either your face-to-face -face course where your content lies or your online course where all of your course material resides. So in this case here, I in module one, I have kind of, your instructor has kind of set up, uh, there's an introduction here of maybe, you know, what they're covering for the week in the class. So maybe they can say, hey, this week um, we're covering something on, I don't know, uh, Star Wars A New Hope, right? And from there, basically, um, these are the assignments that are due this week. Um, these are the chapters I want you to read, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and maybe the course objectives are listed or the weekly objectives are listed right in here. So, you know, that could be kind of a lead into what you're going to be covered, what's going to be covered for the week with your class. If you ever get lost again, um, you can either hit the next button down here or you can go back here at your course menu, it, like, it, like your um, global navigation, it's not going anywhere. It will stay here uh, as long as you're in the course as well. So in the modules area again here, I have, okay, so I just looked at the introduction. Next, um, hey, my instructor put a link in here to, what is it? It's the original Star Wars trailer, right? So I can watch the YouTube video of it um, or anything like that. Your instructor may say, pay special attention to the second minute mark of something that's going on in this video clip right here. If I need to jump out again, I can go back to modules. And then the next thing here is a, um, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, you know, you can either view it through here or through Canvas. It's nice where you don't have to have PowerPoint installed or anything like that. Or if you do have PowerPoint installed, you can actually click here to download the file itself and you can view the PowerPoint from there. Um, so definitely, you know, that's one of two ways you can kind of access the content here. Um, so, you know, this is what a PowerPoint would look like, or like I said, you can download it from here. I'm gonna jump back over to modules again. And then the next thing I have here is what's called a discussion forum. So discussion forum, you know, is great in many ways where, you know, if say if you are, if this, you know, if this is a fully online course, um, you can't, you know, your instructor asks a question, you know, you can't sit there in front of your computer and raise your hand, right? So what you do is you actually um, reply here in the discussion forum, kind of the topic that's being covered. Also, some of your instructors for your face-to-face -face courses will actually, um, give you a topic and maybe they do want you to do this for homework right here. So um, definitely take advantage of it right here. And you'll see kind of, you know, after a new hope, why do you think George Lucas, yada, yada, yada. And then when you're done, you can actually click on reply. And now you can kind of start typing your wonderful reply. Uh, my wonderful reply. So when you are typing in here, you have access to what's called an HTML editor or WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. You can add video in here. You can add uh, images. You can add links. Um, so definitely take advantage of it. You can, um, you know, if you are 
typing something out. Um, make sure that you know it's well thought out. It isn't just kind of a one-word answer or anything like that. Also, you know, please use proper what's called netiquette. You know, no flaming, no all capital letters. If there is an opinion or something that you don't agree with, you know, it, it it's not the end of the world. It, it's not the wrong answer. Um, you know, just be respectful and be polite. Treat others how you would like to be treated. Um, in there, so. Um, with a discussion forum, keep that in mind. Um, so if you see something that might not be right, or even if someone's kind of, um, you know, not post, post, someone's posting some not so nice stuff, definitely reach out to your instructor and they will deal with it accordingly. Um, so with the discussion forum, um, yeah, so here's my wonderful reply. You know, don't do all capital letters because that's just bad. Also, no sideways smiley faces or emoticons. No texties speak like IDK. Um, OIC, uh, in my opinion, so on and so forth. Um, don't do that or what shakes my head. Uh, so, you know, just keep that in mind. You are in a scholarly environment, act scholarly, okay? So I'm done typing everything I want here. I can click on post reply. And so now here's my reply right here. And it can keep going on and on, you know, so maybe I, someone sees this and they can reply to it and so on. So. That's kind of what a discussion thread is. Um, so yeah, again, it's kind of you kind of responding to your instructor's post uh, for either homework, for a face-to-face -face course, or for a weekly topic for your online course. So I'm coming back over to modules again. And we're not going through all this, so don't worry, we're just gonna go through module one. And so, you know, what would college be if you didn't have to submit a paper, right? Yay. Um, in here, so we have a module one weekly reaction paper. Okay, so in here, your instructor can kind of write, okay, uh, something in this mo week's module club covered episode four, yada, yada, yada. Uh, please compose a three-page paper, and then it'll tell you you need it in 12-point Arial font, not 12.5, not 12.75, but 12-point Arial font. Um, please, uh, you know, follow the directions from your instructor. It tells you when it's due, right? And it'll also tell you the points available, 100 points, and you're submitting as a file upload, and it will only show up in Canvas until September 9th at 11.59 p.m. Um, one of the tools that uh, Middlesex has is Turnitin. So in this day and age, you know, uh, I'll tell you, back in the day, we didn't have the ability to just copy and paste and, you know, <laughs> um, you guys have it pretty good. But unfortunately now in this day and age, you can't just copy and paste and, you know, put something in there from a different web page. You do have to cite your resources um, and then kind of, you know, put your own words to the content that you're uh, researching. So that being said, uh, the college does have turn it in. It what it does, it basically uh, reads through your paper, and if it sees kind of a similarity report, it generates one. Um, so say maybe your similarity report's like eighty nine percent. That's not a good thing. And then if it's red, red is bad, meaning that you know you haven't it basically uh, your, your sources. It's eighty nine percent kind of pulling everything from all over the web. So um, definitely want to take a look at it, fix it up, and make sure you paraphrase in your own words or cite your resources as well. So basically, you know, if you have uh, Google Docs, you can associate it here or even Office 365. So maybe you came to campus, you forgot your flash drive, you can actually access your OneDrive right here and kind of attach your paper into the area here. So what I'm gonna do is I can actually click on browse so I can look for my paper that I typed up. Um, and then let me see, do I have a paper here? I have a President Abraham Lincoln doc. That sounds great. It goes with um, Obi-Wan right here, right? And then um, from there, if you want, you can you see the paper added right here. And then from, you can actually, in order to submit it, you have to put a check in the box here to agree to the end user license agreement. Um, if you don't check it, you will not be able to submit your paper. So I check it right here, and then I can submit the assignment. And while it's submitting, before I forget, um, discuss discussions, just so you know, if you are typing something out in discussions, um, there is no autosave in Canvas. So say if the power goes out, your computer battery dies, it does not autosave. Uh, it doesn't matter what you have kind of uh, have typed, it could be a five or 10 paragraphs, it will be lost. So if, rule of thumb, if you are typing something that's taking, you know, that's pretty long and really well thought out, my suggestion would be to open up Microsoft Word, type it in there, there is autosave. That way you have a record of it as well and you can copy and paste it um, from there and that way it's autosaved and everything is hunky-dory from that. 
Um, so my paper was submitted. Um, and if you notice here, it says submitted. Also, the cool thing is you have a timestamp. So I've had a couple of instances where um, a paper is, you know, a student calls up and says, hey, I submitted this paper. Um, you know, it's not showing up. Well, it, I'll go in there and there's like no timestamp whatsoever. So at that point, like, you know, Canvas is pretty, you know, foolproof. So if there's no timestamp in there and I, and I go into your activity report and I see you haven't logged in in like two weeks, yeah, you didn't submit a paper, sorry. So, you know, definitely keep in mind if you do not see the timestamp, it means that your paper was not submitted. Go in and try to resubmit it again. So one of the other cool things with Turnitin, which um, the plagiarism detection software is, you can actually kind of see, depending on what your instructor um, turns on when they are setting up Turnitin, you can see your submission details right here. So if you ever need to access, you know, your paper, it's right here. But if you want to see, you know, when everything was submitted or your similarity report, you can click right here in submission details. And uh -oh, my paper is 100% plagiarized. So sorry about that. It's a failure. I am not going to do well. <laughs> But you can actually see here, so 100%, if I click on it, comes up here. And so, um, yeah, so basically here, everything I did copy and paste is from a website, so it does see that. And if I click on the 100 right here, it will tell me what website I copied it from. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and it'll give you the exact source of where it was copied from. So rule of thumb, you know, if, if you do, if, there is something that you are pulling from website scholarly resource make sure you quote it and you cite it that way you know everything is good and you won't run into any issues um, just so you know too wikipedia is not a scholarly source because i can edit it um, my wife can edit it even my little um, seven-year-old son can edit in wikipedia so just bear that in mind wikipedia is a great springboard a great jumping off point but yeah i would not quote exactly from wikipedia so I'm gonna jump back over here into my module one. I'm going back to modules and we're almost done. <laughs> um, next here, I have a module one quiz. So it's only three points, but you know what? It's a quiz. Uh, I will say this when I click into it here, okay? So there is no due date for this quiz. Make sure you look at the kind of info here. It's three points. There's only three questions and I have a time limit of 10 minutes. For those of you who have like accommodations um, that need, you know, double time, extended time or whatever, I would reach out to your instructor the first week of class, not, you know, an hour before your assignments due and let them know to provide the adequate documentation um, that's required for your class. Also, when you are taking a module one quiz, make sure that, you know, um, so I can tell you right now, I, I have three kids, all 11 and under. My house is chaotic all the time. So when you are taking an online quiz, you know, if you click take the quiz right there, you're clicking in, that means you're officially beginning it. So I know with my house, my house is chaotic in the morning, probably the best time to not to take a quiz would be in the morning. Usually when they're all in bed, the house is quiet. You know, even my wife's in bed, so I can kind of relax and be chill. Um, you know, that's when you want to take your quiz. You can light a candle or two, I don't know, put, put some smooth jazz on the radio, I don't know. But you can click to take the quiz, and it comes up here. Um, so what happens when you click at this point now, so say if something crashes or if there's an issue at this point now, um, yeah, you've kind of already had the question set deliver delivered. I would strongly suggest if there is an issue, you reach out to your instructor because, um, you know, there's nothing that we can do if something kind of, you know, something goes wrong here, which usually doesn't. But, you know, in the worst case, if something goes wrong, reach out to your instructor first. Don't reach out to us because there's not much we can do because we'll tell you to reach out to your instructor. <laughs> so in the, this case here, I only have 10 minutes going on here. If you're really kind of, um, you know, I guess it kind of freaks you out with a timer going here. You can always put up a post-it note kind of right in this area here. That way you can't see the timestamp going on. But in this case here for question one, during the infamous cantina scene, who shot first? That was definitely Han. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi was played by Sir Alec Guinness. That is true. And then next is what was Luke's X-Wing call sign? That was red five. So I'm very confident that yes, I'm doing well on this quiz. And if I click to submit, Da, 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 da. I got a three out of three. Yes. So um, I'm happy. I got 100%. Life is good, right? So I took the quiz here. Now, maybe if I want to see my grades, right? I want to see, hey, I just want to make sure that I got this three out of three on my quiz, right? So I can actually go over here on the left-hand side at my course menu and click on grades. 
do do. Um, so it looks like I'm missing some work here. Uh oh. And then here's that weekly reaction paper that was like 100% um, uh, originality report is bad. And then my module one quiz that I did just take, I got a three out of three here. So I'm happy. And then the cool thing here is you can actually kind of calculate, you know, your grades. Maybe I need to get, you know, 20 points to get a B. You can kind of calculate things out here where, um, it, you know, predictive grading is what it's called. That way you can kind of see what you need to get a certain grade. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the grades right there. And, you know, I think that's kind of pretty much it for the modules area here. And then also in some of your classes, you have a syllabus area. The cool thing here is you'll actually see um, kind of when everything is coming up here, due dates. So here are some due dates here for the assignments that, that I do have to take. Your instructor could actually post your syllabus in here, like a file or a link that will pull up like a PDF file or something like that. So um, yeah, that's, I mean, pretty much mostly it. Um, am I missing anything, Christine? I think you went over everything, yeah. Um, All right. I did fix that link. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tested it this time. <laughs> so let's go see here. There we go. So this is the resource center here. Um, you know, here's our information, which is actually, that was a great segue, Christine, because we're ending this and then we can actually have our info. So, you know, if you have any questions or anything that you do need to reach out to us, elearning at middlesexcc.edu. Um, we do our best to answer, um, you know, through the day, you know, 8.30 to uh, 4.30, we're in the office. Um, afterwards, I do try to check my email in the evening, not all the time, but, you know, my wife yells at me that I need a life. And so I need to kind of get off of my phone or my email. So, you know, if, if I do see something that's like flaming hot if there is an issue um, you know 25 people are emailing the same thing I'm going to jump in if I need to put up an announcement I will um, but usually uh, it, it can wait till the next day and then the weekends if there is an issue I'll take a look every now and then but it's not like all the time um, so yeah here's where we're located we're in center three it's a beautiful house they actually these houses actually have showers in them it's crazy it's weird um, and then so we're in center three we're next to parking lot five um, Here's our phone number here, 732-906-2514. That's me, that's Christine, and we have Edie who kind of works behind the scenes. Um, we, don't, we don't see her too often. And so then in here as well, we have kind of all the resources here that we need to take a look at here. So, so maybe if we wanna see, you know, if we have, if we wanna see anything with grades, if I click on grades, you know, the what if scores, that's the predictive grading, right? I can click into it, and we have a little detail here and how I can approximate my assignment scores using what if grading, right? So that's a great thing within the um, resource. So if I jump back out here or on the home screen, I can come back out again and maybe I wanna go into courses. So I can see the course navigation, modules, assignments, everything else in here, like online submissions. So here's more information here. So really well put together. Christine did a fantastic job on this. Um, you know, if you ever get stuck, you can come in here and take a look at it. Um, if you can't get a hold of us, this is a great resource for you to use as well. Kind of a just in time thing. So um, I, you know, with that, um, you know, does anyone have any questions at this point? No one has typed anything in the chat, so it looks like you went over everything fairly well. That's um, only 7.40. Have... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if someone asked, how do you print from Canvas? What are you looking to, um, and this came to me uh, privately, um, if you're looking to kind of print through Canvas, um, I guess it's dependent upon what you're looking to print. So maybe, let me just jump back into my dashboard here. Um, you know, say if there's a PowerPoint that you want to print out or like a Word document that comes up, yeah, you can print them out. Um, either A, it will pop up on your screen, like you can open it up in Word and print it from there. But I mean, there's really no kind of like print button kind of within Canvas, only like within grades area, I think. Yeah, you print grades here or I'm just trying to think. Uh, anything in announcements? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you can kind of do a screen grab if you want. I know with a Mac, it's like, uh, I don't know, Command Shift 4, I can kind of pick the area that I want. And it'll um, give me a screen grab if I want. But yeah, as far as printing out, yeah, there really isn't anything to, 
a big printer button or anything like that. Uh, let's see. Can't star courses. Okay. So yeah, there's, there's a weird kind of thing going on with Canvas that I have a ticket in with um, uh, the people who created Canvas um, in regards to starring. Um, so if, if a course that's coming up that it's say for fall um, that you can't see um, in here, let's see if I can hopefully have an example. Do I have an example? Of course, I've passed them on, but nothing new. Um, so yeah, see, I'm kind of running into an issue too with starring as well. I mean, even though this is a past course, um, if there's a future enrollment that's kind of coming up, um, if you can't star it, I would check all the way to the right-hand side. Does it say if it's published or if it's not published? If it says no, then yeah, it's not going to allow you. It's not going to show up on your dashboard until like the, the first day uh, school starts. Um, if your instructor changes a few settings, then yes, it will show up on your dashboard. But as of right now, if it's not published, uh, your instructor, it, it's not going to show up uh, on your dashboard. Uh, even if it's published. Um, Aditya, uh, if I'm pronouncing your name uh, incorrectly, Aditya, um, what I would do if you can email um, the inbox to elearning at middlesexcc.edu um, with the with your name, your full name. That way I can look you up and kind of see what the issue is and we can kind of uh, find out what's going on. And, you know, we're in the office tomorrow, so we'll, we'll definitely be able to figure it out before the semester starts. So. Um, definitely send us an email and we'll be able to uh, answer any questions you have and find out what's going on. So again, if you need to get a hold of us here, this is our information right here. I'll actually make it bigger. So here's our email, elearning at middlesexcc.edu. And again, here's our phone number, 732-906-2514. Um, if you call in right now, no one will pick up. Just <laughs> give you a heads up. Um, okay, uh, I believe you just went over this, but uh, Michael asked, it, what if a course is published, but I cannot see it? Okay, if a course is published and you cannot see it, it just means there are some kind of stipulations uh, in course settings um, where basically you might not be able to see a course until like the start of the semester. So um, I guess I can kind of show you an example of kind of what I'm talking about kind of get a perspective for me because I'm, I'm an admin, but at the same time I am teaching a course as well. Where are we at here? So I bring up Chrome. I was logged in as a student, so now let me log in as my superpowers here. And that way you can kind of give you a perspective that not many people see. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Okay, so I am te teaching a course this semester, right? So I'm teaching this course right here, CSC 105. So what your instructors actually, they have a setting in here, right? So what they have in here, they have a start date, they have an end date of your courses, right? And if you notice in here, let me kind of pull it up a little bit bigger. So here now, they actually have these boxes that they can check. It's kind of like, I guess, double jeopardy. I don't know. <laughs> students can only participate in between these course dates as well as, you know, students restrict students from viewing this course before the start date. So when this is checked, that means it's not showing up on your dashboard. So your instructor would physically have to go through and uncheck that. Um, you know, we haven't received too many calls from many instructors asking how to do that, and I haven't seen too many. So if you're not seeing your course right away, then yeah, um, that's probably checked. Um, if your instructor is saying, you know, sends you an email via Outlook saying, hey, um, go into my course and take a look at this, and you're not seeing it, um, fire us an email and we can kind of reach out to your instructor and kind of say, hey, you, you said this, but really they can't see it. <laughs> so. Hopefully that answers any kind of question uh, from Michael. This is a good name, by the way. Yeah, it looks like everyone seems to have all their questions answered. All right. And the cool thing is, this is being recorded, so we can kind of post this up, which I promise to do tomorrow, Christine, right? I'm going to promise to do this tomorrow. Um, up to YouTube. That way, if there are any questions, you can kind of review this. You, that way, you can kind of cycle through instead of hearing me for an hour or 45 minutes straight. You can kind of pick the point where you want to um, jump to. <laughs> I 
I know you showed them um, how to contact us, but I'm going to put it in the chat as well if anyone wants to copy and paste it. Okay. Okay, yeah, and then also the app, again, the app is great, definitely take advantage of it. Um, just keep in mind though, you know, there might be some things that you can't see in the app, especially with like gradebook settings. Um, you know, uh, you're not gonna see everything kind of the same as you would see it on your computer screen. So, you know, again, try not to submit a um, paper uh, or try not to submit like a paper via like either, you know, your cell phone or whatever. I know the capability is there, but you know, if you're typing something up, you know, you're going to have grammar check. You're going to have, uh, there could be some issues and stuff. Take the time, type it up in Word, then upload it. Um, that way you don't run into any issues. I know the school just came out with their app as well. So if you get a chance to take a look at it, it's pretty sweet. Um, I don't know. All right, so there's no questions coming through. Kind of going once, going twice kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, we want to thank you for taking the time to come out tonight, uh, to, to chill out with us here on our third night of presenting <laughs> orientations. So, um, you know, if there's any questions, again, throughout the semester, um, you know, even over the weekend, well, you know, I, I'll answer my email and stuff, but if you have any questions, um, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, in a timely manner, so that way we don't leave any of you hanging. Most of you won't see your classes until Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So enjoy the um, weekend. Enjoy the weekend <laughs> and have a great holiday. Yeah. Absolutely. So, with that being said, Christine, you've been an awesome co host. Thank you. Um, I will bring in donuts tomorrow or something. <laughs> and then um, everyone else, um, you know, have a great semester. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, we're here to support you every step of the way. Uh, and no question is too small. If you have any issues, reach out to us and we will help you. Uh, is it best to use Chrome as, um, so yeah, I mean, I use Chrome for everything for Canvas. That's my preference. Christine, Can what do you use? Canvas does recommend it on their website. So yes, mm -hmm. use yeah. Chrome. I like Chrome as well. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, Firefox is great as well. Um, I've, it's actually, I've been pretty impressed with it more so lately than uh, Chrome's kind of getting bulky and heavy and uh, clunky the older it gets, kind of like the old days of Internet Explorer. So. Okay. Okie dokie. We can wrap it up. Awesome. So everyone have a great weekend. You know what? Don't stress about your class. You know what? Go and enjoy your, uh, you know, four day weekend, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, enjoy it. All right. Enjoy the Labor Day. Uh, have fun. Don't stress about your course. You have, you know, 15 weeks after that to stress about your course. Have fun this weekend. Um, don't do anything I wouldn't do and um, oh, enjoy and have a great semester. All right. So, thank you, Mike. All right. Thank you, Christine. And thank you everyone. And have a great holiday weekend. Take it easy.